I am Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the Compass Kensington CV20. So starting the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your LPG filling point. So it doesn't have a bottle on this vehicle, it has a 25 litre underslung gas tank. So to fill it you go to your local LPG centre and fill it with the filling. Take the cap off, being it fitting, the connector fits onto there and then you'd fill it until it stops filling and from empty these normally take between 22 and 25 pound depending on how much you're paying for gas at the moment and that's how you would fill it there is a gauge inside so you can always see how much gas is on board but i'll show you that one inside the vehicle underneath you'll see you've got a grey and a blue tap grey is your wastewater tap blue is if you want to drain off your fresh water so if you've taken on a source of contaminated water uh, or you winterise in the van, you'd open the blue one and you do exactly the same with the grey one but this is any dirty water. So normally on the way out of your site, you get rid of this so that you're not carrying extra weight that's not needed because it's dirty water. And make sure that it's fully drained off, both of these taps are left open in the winter when you're not using it to avoid the frost from freezing the water and causing damage to the van because frost damage isn't covered under any sort of warranty it's the consumer's responsibility to drain the vehicle down you do have your cassette so this one's a magnet so it clips on the side of the van and then to get, get the cassette out it's a case of lifting that orange handle sliding it out you can either wheel it or you can carry it with the handle on the cassette to the waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block and then to empty take the cap off press the button at the back allows a bit of air in stops it glugging and it means it pours easy tip it out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap so a bit of water in there a little shake tip out again before you go in with a cap full of chemical into here and it's good to go back into the motorhome. Clips in, like so. To fill the water up, we've got the water filling point here. So you take the cap off, get yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections, as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. You put the hose into there and fill it until it overflows or until you're happy that you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel you'll also notice we've got the heating on at the moment so that's the exhaust for the heater hook the motor home up you get your hooker blades you pull this collar back and you slide it on to the connection of the vehicle always hook the van up first then the power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead in your hand on the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and built into the surround is your rear view camera it's got a full bike rack on this model that don't come with them as standard previous customers added this and you can move these along depending on how big your bike so truck the wheels these through the spokes to tie the wheels down and these through the crossbars then we do advise that you put some sort of bike lock around the bikes just to stop them from being stolen when the van is left unattended on the bottom you've got a tow bar with 13 pin electrics if you plan on towing anything on this side you've got your dual on this dot awning so there's a separate video on YouTube how to operate these but we can show you that on collection when you come to collect the vehicle because it's a little bit windy here today we don't want to damage that awning step switch is here but retracts and comes out by the switch but it will automatically retract when the engine switched on but the engine will have to be switched back off to get the step out as it's a safety feature You've got the fuel at the passenger door, which opens with the main ignition key. So this key here will open the fuel. Tire pressures are here. 
So five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI front and back. The tool kit is underneath the passenger seat. And in the cab floor, underneath this panel, is where the main engine battery lives. So it's not underneath the bonnet, it's in the cab floor for your engine battery. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. You've got all your fluids this side, so screen wash is the main one you're going to need. And if you remove these three tabs, this cover lifts off, and you've got your power steering fluid next to it, followed by your coolant and your brake fluid. Oil filler and dipstick. Paint code. Weight plate, three and a half ton, two ton tone limit with that tow bar. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start and then your positive is just this one here as the cab battery is underneath the floor. To operate your eldest control panel, what you need to do is your master switch is here. So this turns the 12 volt system on and off here. Then you've got your pump. So make sure you've got enough water first before you turn your pump on. And to do that, you need to press this button here and it'll tell you how much water you've got on board at any one time. Then you'll be able to turn your pump on and that'll pressurize the water to the taps, toilet and shower. You've got your master switch for your lights here, which are all then individually switched around the van. You've got your on and light, which is the light on the outside of the motorhome. And then you do have your leisure battery reading here along with your main entrance light on the switch. To operate your wheel system, which is your hot water at the top and your heating at the bottom, the plus and the minus is just the temperature gauge, so it's all the way to 30 degrees or all the way to off. The snowflake is approximately five degrees and the nighttime mode is approximately 15 degrees on the temperature. But we'll start off with the hot water first. So. When you get to your site, depending on if you're on gas or electric, depends on what source you put the heating and hot water on. So starting off with the hot water, you've got one kilowatt of electric, which is one wiggly line, which is 750 watts. You'd use this on smaller CL sites, or if you're going to take this abroad on airs, you've got two wiggly lines, which is eight, 1850 watts of mains power so you can use that on a 16 amp site you've got gas on its own if you were wild camping you'd have no other source bar than gas to heat your water on because you would have no electric and then you've got electric plus 750 watts and electric plus 1850 watts so this if you are in desperate need of hot water both sources together will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat the hot water and that's the source you'd use underneath you've got your heating so this is an air blown system to heat the vehicle so 750 watts 1850 on a 16 amp feed from the site on electric Three kilowatts, so depending on if you're on a super site, you may be able to use three kilowatts. If it starts tripping the van, just turn it off and put it back on to 1850, which is two wiggly lines, not three. And then you've got gas on its own. If you were wild camping, that's how you'd heat your van, through gas. And then you've got gas plus 1850 watts, so this is known as mixture two. And that, in the winter, will drastically reduce the time it takes to heat a cold van to a warm van. So we'll put that on for 10 minutes and then turn the gas on, turn the gas off even and continue to heat the van on, two, on 1850 watts of electric. Like I said before, this is your temperature. So the snowflake is five degrees. It keeps it above five degrees. The moon is nighttime mode, which keeps it above 15 degrees. And then right the way at the top is 30 degrees. Remember to turn the system off both and you'll hear the fan circulate in the back until it falls quiet before you turn your master switch off. Otherwise, you can jolt 
the heat there because it's not doing the right shutdown procedure and you might get an exclamation mark a red one down the side so whatever's failed say it was the heating you'd press the heating button and the plus button together hold it for around 30 seconds and that should eliminate that exclamation mark and then you should be able to select the source you want and it's exactly the same for the hot water this is your gas level indication gauge so you can turn it on and off and obviously it's shown green which means you've got gas on board if that was to show red it's time to refill your 25 litre gas tank from outside so to operate your fedford fridge which is a 12 volt compressor fridge you turn it on and off here this is your temperature at the top so you can adjust the temperature of the fridge so it doesn't freeze the shopping and then you've got the moon which is nighttime mode which lowers the performance of the fridge which will then lower the decibels of the fridge so it won't be as loud but when you're not using it turn it off put the little blue clip into the middle and just don't bang the door shut just rest it shut leave it open ajar so that air can circulate in and out of the fridge to stop smells and mold from growing in your fridge and then once every so often Give it a good wipe out with some antibacterial sprays and wipes just to make sure that you're not getting any funny smells in your fridge. In the kitchen area you've got three gas rings. So that's all three lit. Let them cool down so that they're cool enough to touch before you put the glass lid down otherwise you can shatter the glass. And underneath You've got your grill, so you've just got to hold the thermocouple in for a few seconds once you've had it. So that's your oven, and then going back to the grill, there you are. Allow it to get warm before releasing and it will stay lit. You may want to take these out when travelling as it can cause a little bit of rattling when on the road. The kitchen lights here and for the back as well. Put some storage in here but at the bottom you've got three gas taps. So any problems with gas you can isolate each individual appliance here. The main shut off for the tank is underneath the van with it being an underslung tank. So you can turn them off here and that's sufficient for ferries and things. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced. The technician will test each appliance. Got some storage drawers down here. Large pan drawer underneath the oven. I'll get onto that locker in a minute because that's where your boiler is. But you've got your microwave which is a 800 watt mains microwave. And your plate rack in here and obviously your main plug for your microwave. So should you ever need to isolate it, you can isolate it there. Underneath here is the location of your boiler. So this yellow tap that's pointing to the cab when you're not using it in the winter to stop the water from freezing in the boiler as it holds 10 litres of water needs to be pointing to the driver's side so from the front you need to turn it like that and that will drain off all 10 litres directly out underneath the chassis leave it open in that position so point it this way leave it open open all your taps within the van and open the fresh and the waste outside That'll stop any water from sitting in any pipelines, any tanks, and causing any damage. Because frost damage isn't covered by warranty. It's your responsibility to drain the boiler off. And it's a very costly mistake to make if you leave the water in the boiler and it does freeze, because it is a new boiler job. So drain it off, open your taps inside and outside the van, and then do it in reverse when you come to use the van again so shut everything shut the boiler fill the vehicle with water prime it through the hot side of the tap because the cold side you'll get automatically 
once it starts coughing and spluttering it's fine just it's purging the water through into the boiler until you get a pressurized flow and then your system is primed there is also a little reset button here on the boiler so this little red button just down beside my finger here so should you get a warning light on the water heater you just press and hold it for 30 seconds and that will eliminate and reset the water heater's control module in your back lounge just behind your toilet area this is the location of your rcd unit so you've got your main trips and you've got your 12 volt fuses which are all listed what they do so do carry some spare standard size blade fuses with you and you've also got the switch there for your tank heaters so your waste and your fresh are heated under with probes in the tank so if it's going to freeze overnight just turn them on and your water won't freeze in the tanks but that's only for when using it we do advise when you're not using it to drain the tanks down just moving along from your rcd unit you've got your pump here and you've also got your heating so your heaters under slung, these are your ducts coming out for the heating to blow around the various parts of the van. That just down beside this green cable here between these two intake vents, you do have a red button as well for resetting the hot water, the heating system. So the hot water ones underneath the kitchen, the heating ones here. If you want to get an exclamation mark on the side and you can't clear it with the control panel, come and press this button for 30 seconds, which should clear the fault on the heating side of the of the control panel. The battery's further back as well, so the battery lives in this wooden box. So take the lid off, and you've got a 95 amp hour battery, and your main battery fuse is just down here in the loom so should you get any problems try the main battery fuse as the last solution if you've tried all your other fuses because they don't go normally but they might but your battery fuse is just here down beside the battery in here you do have your tv booster so you can amplify this signal as it's a fixed aerial so should it be too strong or too weak try here first to get the perfect picture on your tv and then underneath you can plug in with 12 volt 240 and a tv aerial the individual lights are individually switched on your readers front and back and then further back you do have your solar panel which is just wired to the leisure battery so that'll do its own thing and charge your leisure battery but obviously hookup takes priority because it's a bigger voltage when hooked up in your washroom area to operate your toilet the blue button on the back is the flush which comes from the fresh water tank so it's a fresh water fed flush so before you use the toilet i would always flush it first just because it helps lubricate the seal so So press the blue button on the back, flush it and put like a small amount of water in first before you open the blade on the bottom which is a grey lever. Use the toilet, everything's now going to go into the cassette. Give it a good flush after use. If you've bought the blue chemical with the pink, dilute the pink in an empty spray bottle about that much pink to the rest water spray the bowl flush and then once you've finished close the blade off if this was to be left in the open position the cassette won't come out the outside of the van because the mechanism's engaged and it, the cassette will be stuck so remember to make sure that's closed so that's why i would do it in that routine and you'll never get into that situation You'll get a few green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here, which means that the cassette is full. And you, it's time to empty it, rinse it, and replenish it with chemical. Toilet cabinet. Push. Plug sink. This is also your shower head which clips up here. 
That's your water getting warm there, so your hot water system is working as it should. As you can see the steam coming off the water there. And then remember with your shower tray, don't use any harsh chemicals because it'll take the nice shiny white finish away and it'll leave a stained yellow look. So mild chemicals and a soft microfiber cloth. So no bleaches, something like washing up liquid or nothing that contains bleach to clean this and it'll leave the nice gloss finish. And at the back of the van of the CV20, the best thing about it is you can use it as two singles or it does create a double bed. If you want to create a double bed, you just lift and slide the two sections together. Take these away, you don't need these. Get rid of them, put them in the cab at the front of the van. And then you get your infill cushions, you pop that there, which is your backrest. Pop that in there as well. And there you have your double bed across the back of the vehicle. You can turn them all upside down, which is the better way because you don't get the ribs and the bull noses of the cushions. You get a flatter surface to sleep on, then put a fitted sheet on and your duvet and create a large double bed at the back of the van. And then when you select reverse, your reverse camera comes on, on the head unit, in the cab, and you can see that the green is how much distance you've got, the oranges you're getting close, and the red is the back of the bumper of the vehicle.